Welcome back to the Wizard's Bus. I'm inside the bus and we got lots of updates. They're small updates, but lots of them. Let's go take a look at what we found out and what we have yet to do. Let's get started. So for those of you that haven't been following along, this is our 2006 Eldorado Easy Rider 2 that we are converting to an RV. If you haven't watched the previous videos, you should go back and watch them. There's lots of things to get caught up on. In the last video, it was very messy. We had stuff all apart. There was pieces everywhere, but a lot of dirt was left over. And Mrs. Wizard has gone through and cleaned that up, and she'll show you her progress. The progress I have today is some electrical things and some question for you guys about the air conditioning. We've come a long way, but we have a very long ways to go. We've took some measurements inside, getting some ideas of what we're going to do with cabinets and countertops and all these different things, but let's go take a look inside. It is a lot cleaner in here. Mrs. Wizard has done some sweeping and cleaning in here. There was tons of dirt. I'll let her show you guys around, but it is so nice and big in here. You can hear an echo. Go. All right, what you got, Mrs. Wizard? Okay, ladies, gents, this thing was a disaster. It had 20, 30 years of just grunge. Now they kept it clean, but they couldn't reach all the pieces and parts and underneath things. And so now that the seats are all out, we found a lot of stuff. And we saw that back shelf last time filled with all those screws and bolts and general trash. That's all gone. I'm going to take the camera from the wizard and let me show you. Okay, legend. So as you see here, you'll see those seats did clean up nicely. One thing that I have done is I filled a lot of those holes in with silicone. Obviously, those would have been very bad because some of these are really big holes. The black ones, the black dots were really big. These little gray ones were much smaller like screw heads, but these were massive bolts in there. And those would have allowed water in the wheel well to be kicked up and spew dirt and crap inside the cabin. Not what we were wanting. If we move to the other one, there's some lights that Wizard obviously is going to talk to us about in a minute. But again, nice and clean as well. Floor. Nice and clean. I actually mopped in here to get all of the extra dirt and items out. Over here, even though we removed that seat, I went ahead and put the armature back in because as people said in the comments, it would be very awkward for me to be sitting down on the floor and the wizard to be up here way taller. And so by putting this base back in, we'll put a structure on it, then we can put a seat and I'll be relatively the same height as he. We went ahead and pushed it back all the way to the wheel well casing just so the wizard will have space to access panels inside that front dash area. And this space now underneath will become some storage in the bus. So looking back this way, you'll see the walls are still pretty gross. Haven't washed or cleaned those really. And I'm not really planning to. They're going to get covered. The walls that is. The windows, maybe one or two of those might get covered. I know people have talked about, oh, you should take them out and fill them in with metal. And I'm like, why? They don't leak. They're solid. I don't want to make anything that can create leaks. We know how bad RVs can be for roof leaks, window leaks, and squishy floors. I don't want to add any possibility to have any sort of problem. So we're going to leave them the way they are. And they will get covered probably with a wrap on the outside. And then maybe some, I've got some ideas on how to cover the windows safely as well. As we move back, lots of mopping in here as well. You'll notice that on these wheel wells, or those seats where we did put the armature back in from the seats, because again, we, as we mentioned, this is going to be where the beds are. Not many options here. People have mentioned, oh, you could put a fuller size bed, a queen in, but it would be hard to navigate and try and climb in and not my idea of, you know, a nice restful place to be. So again, this is gonna to have to be raised because the bed is not going to fit between here and the back ledge. It's gonna to have to go on top of that back ledge as well. This will create a little bit of storage space potentially on top of the wheel wells. And again, we will have some storage space right here where the armature is open. As we look at the back shelf, you'll see that there are still holes there. I did not fill all those in with the silicone. Those have nested nut plates in them so we can attach things there. So I went ahead and left that. And I've got some ideas for when we put the bed in as well. But now let's look. Here's that back shelf. I did vacuum it. 
Probably gonna have to do a little more in here to clean that part up, but you can see as we pan up, that's what this carpet was originally. I know, ew, precisely. But this back wall, since it is closed in, is going to be where we have storage as well. So that is gonna get covered up but let's go out and see how many bolts and all that other stuff and nuts and washers that we pulled off. Here it is. Yeah, I'm using a paint tray. I'm not using it right now. So yeah, there's lots of pieces and parts. Those are the ones we actually want to keep. And I'm glad we kept these because some of these pieces and parts I've had to go back and use like this one to put back in those armatures where the seats were. So you never know. It's nice to have them when you need it. As I said, I've done a quick mock-up in Adobe Illustrator. And you can see that I've kind of got some idea of where things are. I've kind of got things planned out, just rudimentary. A lot of it is, where is stuff? How big is it? And how much space am I going to have? Don't have too much planned right now, but like many people said, the plan will include making a mock-up in here. Not so sure how many people suggested do it using cardboard, using other kind of materials, nothing permanent, mind you, just to get a feel for the layout. Having never actually built the interior of an RV, only having really investigated the interior of our vintage aristocrat low liner, I have some ideas. And coming with a construction background, I think I have some good ideas. So kitchen probably gonna be on that side and our very simple bathroom. And on this side, this smaller section, probably going to be some sort of a seating environment. So, so far that's what we've got. Let's go see what's going on with the wizard. So in this whole process, I have actually been in contact with several of you guys, fans and things that are experienced with these buses. And one of the guys has been very, very helpful. I'm not gonna give out any names or anything like that. But one thing I have already purchased is actually a scan tool for a bus. Looks like you're a typical small code reader, but this is not typical. Those are weird co connectors. It has an OBD2 connector here. I suppose it could work if you had that, but this is for heavy duty applications like semi trucks and buses. And it plugs in over here. You can see engine diagnostic, ABS diagnostic, and transmission diagnostic. So everything is there to read codes and data. So while we're driving, if we have any codes or anything pop up, I'm not completely stranded. I can clear them or see what it is with this. That'll save a lot of diagnostic time. And I'll turn on the key and we can see on our Allison gear shifter. It's in neutral. And it's flashing a five being that it's a five speed. And that's very annoying. I don't want to hurt you guys' ears. But the person who's really been helping me out on this says that they can do some changes with the transmission control module and unlock sixth gear. Apparently the transmission, the B300R, already has sixth gear. It's just not being utilized. The transmission control module doesn't have that enabled. It really wasn't necessary just to zoom around inside the city. So he can unlock that. It'll be kind of like a double overdrive, which I imagine will get me past 60 miles an hour. And I can maybe cruise 65, 70. If I can do that, I'm happy. 70, I don't need to do 80 and 90. That's kind of foolish with an RV. I don't think anyone does that. And if you do, you're asking for trouble. The transmission control module is actually right behind the driver's seat. This little gray blade shaped thing with connectors going to it. That's the Allison transmission control module. And here's a little relay box. But we're not going to be messing with that. So along with the transmission upgrade, which will get me sixth gear, the person who's also helping me, I'm sending them my ECM, the Cummins computer for the engine, and they will be able to reflash it from 230 horsepower to 300 horsepower and from 520 pound-feet of torque to 660. There should be a dramatic amount of pickup or acceleration. We'll be able to tow a small, like a Geo Metro, tiny little car or Ford Festiva or something behind us. And we'll have a sixth gear. That will be amazing. So that's kind of some of the updates there. 
and we'll go ahead and move to the lights. So these are called the chases on either side. That's where they run heater hoses, air conditioning lines, wiring all behind this. So we're not going to be cutting and hacking this stuff out. We're going to leave it just like it is. It also has the lighting that we can use already installed. But these are the old T12 fluorescent bulbs. It's got 12 volt ballasts installed, little boxes all along. You can take the little, you can see behind here, there's a little rectangle. I'm going to remove those ballasts and just bypass them and put 12 volt LED tube bulbs, I guess you could call them. They're like fluorescent tubes, but they're LED. So we'll have nice, efficient lighting all through here, delete all the ballasts. And I'll also add some 120 volt lights. So I'll have either or, 12 volt or 120 depending on which one we want to use. So we've got the lights figured out. We have decided with the air conditioning to do a mini split system in the back, big giant cubby hole area back there. We could put the outside unit with some fans and put some, two, which would be one back here and one up there, air conditioning and heating. It'll be a heat pump. It'll be very efficient. And I will be using the Rode AC. The guy who's been helping me with the transmission and the engine control modules has told me he's very familiar with these systems. I believe the little black box, which is the control module, is dead. But he says, being that I have the mechanical inclinations that I do, I could easily just run my own switches and I will be the control module. I can turn on the condenser fans, turn on the compressor, turn on the blowers, everything, there's the, you can see the actual fuses or circuit breakers for those. The relays are inside that white box up there. I just have to run switches to the relays. And that's a bit of good news as well is on the compressor, I thought that the clutch coil was bad. It actually, just the wire that went behind it was shorted out and rubbing on the case. I'll go show you guys that. So here we have the big giant compressor. I wasn't getting 12 volts through all these switches because, like I mentioned, the control module is dead. But that doesn't matter. I can run my own fused power and a switch and everything and do this myself and still retain the use of the safety switches for pressure. But I repaired some wiring back behind here, and now it doesn't short out when I do power to it. Let me turn off the little weird buzzing noise there. There we go. It's alive! It works, guys! So now I know I'll be able to run my own switches and relays, put Freon in this thing, get it all serviced up, and I can have full power, six tons of cooling power. A lot of people will mention in the comments that buses get really hot, especially when you're on the road, and it takes so much cooling to stay cool. One guy mentioned he put two rooftop units with the generator running on his bus, and it still wasn't enough. He's sweating while he's driving. With this system, that will not be the case. It will literally freeze you out, and that's exactly what I want. I mentioned I was upgrading the ECM on the actual ISB here, the engine. You can see I have it disconnected. Here's the connectors, and it was on this plate. It's kind of a cooling plate here. The fuel runs through it. So that's off being reprogrammed. Also, the transmission control module, a different one will be sent that has sixth gear unlocked. It's not going to hurt the engine because these are Cummins approved files. They are meant to upgrade these engines to those levels. If I were to go higher than that, I'd start having to change injectors and turbo and doing all kinds of different things. But that's pretty much as far as I can go with the factory engine. And I'm definitely going to go there. It's going to be totally, totally worth it. So Mrs. Wizard is getting some things figured out on the interior as far as layout and dimensions and what we're going to do with that. But before we dive in too deep, I need to be sure that the transmission and the road speed is going to be something we can use and that the engine can be upgraded as far as a tune or a reflash to a power level that is usable, especially on steep mountain grades while towing a small car. Now that I see those things are possible and it's going to be a massive upgrade for this bus, It'll have full six speed and more power. So that kind of eliminates having to worry about the engine transmission situation. Then we can focus on what's going on in there. And we have so much more work to do, which means many more videos for you guys. If you're curious what kind of tools we're using on this bus, 
Check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And if you want to keep up with this bus or other projects going on, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.